<laughs> yeah, before we say the wrong thing. Ooh. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. All right. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Bailey from Blowforge. This is my coworker and friend Nick. Happy to be here. So happy. Thanks for joining us again, everybody. This I say again. I mean, I don't yeah. actually know if you're joining us again. Might be your first time. Yeah, so it's we true. should be either, you're probably either on YouTube or on Facebook with us here today. Mm -hmm. um, if you follow us on uh, Facebook, you'll just see us popping into your stream every time we decide to go live lately. We've been doing it on Tuesday mornings, but who, who knows what we might do in the future. <laughs> it's true, yeah. Yeah. In fact, you let us know if there's a time that works best for you. If you have some input there, let us know. Oh, yeah. We'd if we love can adjust that. and accommodate, we will. Can't Absolutely. promise. But please do let us know. Uh, and then if you're on YouTube, maybe you got an email from me this morning. Oh, goodness. <laughs> not something off of our board. Well, I that brings can't believe us it. right into our topic for today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Nick goodness. Nick and I have been printing up this. Um, oh. This is an IKEA pegboard. Yes. And we have all these fun custom accessories for it. And we thought it'll be no problem to put it right between us. Yeah, uh, yeah. Certainly. And then my we'll elbow have lots still differently. But uh, I'll let you <laughs> I'm going to jump onto chat real quick and see if we've got any questions. Oh, that's We are amazing. taking questions live from chat today. So feel free to uh, to ask them as we go. This is just to prove that this is live, by the way. This is know? really live. Yeah, something <laughs> has to planned. go wrong. Oh, man. Yeah, we just put together that little tape. I can't so you'll get it back together. It. Yeah, I think I probably can. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Well, we've um, already got some questions coming in. Um, yeah, excellent. Mud Puddle, love the name. Uh, <laughs> Glowforge, can you cut fiberboard and what is the max thickness? So, if by fiberboard you mean kind of a composite board, like a. Um, what are some of the other words for it besides draft board? Ours is called draft board, which is our proof grade Glowforge special material that we made that's kind of like a fiber board. What is the other word yeah, for it? I, I, I'm wondering if maybe you mean some of the materials that are like a canvas impregnated with resin. Let us know I, a little bit more think. what you mean by fiber board yeah, there. But in general, most materials you'll be able to cut through about a quarter of an inch. That's a good rule of thumb. Excellent. And Charles says, good morning, excited good morning, to learn Charles. something new. Good morning. And I'd love to hear from anybody else in chat if you're here, if you already have a Glowforge, if you're thinking about getting one, what you do with it, if you run a business, if it's just a hobby, um, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to jump over here to Facebook too. Hello awesome. from Nebraska. Hi, Robert. From Nebraska. We're here in Seattle. So it's actually kind of a rainy. Yeah, it's our first rainy I know you've in a never heard time. about rain in Seattle before. <laughs> what a topic. But no, in July, it's a little less common. And Yeah, I, I'm preparing to go on vacation last night we were tidying up around the house but i definitely did not spend the time to cover up any of our outdoor furniture no and then this morning it's all why wet. would you so that's fun. <laughs> yeah so uh, hopefully it dries off in time but yeah thank you welcome uh anybody else out there from uh seattle anybody else experienced the weather this morning too yes yeah it's uh it's always really fun to do these things, but the, the traffic coming into the office to film is always like, we're all figuring out coming back to work after the yeah. pandemic, and so it's really hit and miss, but Nick and I have had a blast kind of getting this all ready for you this morning. Um, yeah, and actually we did this all this morning too, yeah. so just to <laughs> emphasize how long this took, and we've probably spent about an hour or so, and this idea actually came from one of our colleagues. Yeah, let's show uh, that photo that oh, Adrian, yeah. Uh, yeah, so one of our colleagues, he's uh, I think a product manager on the on the product team, and so he, he joined Glowforge, he got a Glowforge, and you know how we're all on Skype and Zoom and mm -hmm. Google Hangouts together these days. So we see him just at his desk every day and he's got this pegboard behind him. And I started noticing all these new and different things on it his pegboard grow, all right? the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is it kind of in its full fruition. Like you, so you see you've got like, he's got some kind of like paint roller with mm -hmm. a special thing. He's got, we were just looking at this up close. It's a non-alcoholic beer with its own, I think it's a special <laughs> edition one. So maybe he was saving the can. Um, like just all these different special custom accessories that he made. So this Ikea pegboard is like really common. You can get it at Ikea, you can get it on Amazon, everything. And and um, with Glowforge, you can make these custom holders and accessories for it to yeah. hold whatever exactly you need. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. We asked yeah. him for some of his files. So these are just like, <laughs> these are these are not in our catalog yet. Maybe uh -huh. they will Maybe be someday. They will, yeah. If you um, like this, let us know. They're not from Etsy or anything. These are just, we literally asked a coworker, hey, we love your Glowforge project. Could we print it on our live stream? And he said, sure. So yeah, we haven't done one of those in a while. Right, a real personal yeah, project. Yeah. So it's really fun. Yeah, I, I really hope in the future we can share more of what the staff here are doing because they make such incredible stuff. And they the, do. The, the people here are so, when we think about their interests, it's so broad. Like you right. have Adrian who loves this sort of complex but highly organized Organization, system. Organization, exactly. And then we have the super artistic people as well. And then everything in between. It's really incredible. Oh, so we I'm had a coworker who this. dove right into leather working and just had oh. the most amazing affinity made bags and like headdresses and masks and stuff. Incredible. Mm -hmm. We're getting a whole yeah. bunch of questions. Let me Excellent. go That's through great. a few of these. 
Um, Amy says, love our Glowforge, being able to make anything we can imagine from northern Colorado. Hello from Minnesota. Any plans on developing a cylinder add-on from Ron? Mm -hmm. Ron, by that I think you probably mean um, like a rotary attachment yeah. so that mm -hmm. you can rotate and round thing. We don't have any plans to do that in any of our current models. I don't think the size would allow, but um, if you are thinking about making and selling circular things and you want to customize them, like maybe a Yeti tumbler or uh, you know, wine, wine bottles mm -hmm. or things Rolling like that. Pins. Yeah. yeah. One thing that I've seen folks do is, um, so you can get, you can put objects in that are about two inches. That's about your, the height that you can get in your Glowforge. And so I've seen folks do really creative things with silicone, with cork, with all sorts of like yep. wrappers. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things you can do Stencils, there. Stencils, oh, airbrushing, yeah. oh. sound blasting, that kind of thing exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, if you're interested in tackling something like that, check out community.glowforge.com. If you're not a Glowforge owner, you can still go there, still view all of the topics. And if you search for rotary or engraving or round objects, you'll see all of the creative ways that other people have tackled that same problem. Uh, back on YouTube, I'm just seeing some of these same um, names that I've been seeing for a while. Crazy Life nice. is Mom. She's been tuning in for a while, um, trying to get a Glowforge, or wants to get a Glowforge, but trying to figure out how they, they would make it into a profitable, profitable mm, business. I mm -hmm. mean, keep tuning in and keep following us on Instagram um, yep. and also hashtag Glowforge on Instagram mm -hmm. if you can actually follow the hashtag and then you'll like just have Glowforge magic in your feed all day of like what everybody's <laughs> yeah, doing. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and if you have specific questions too, I don't know if you can see this right now, but it's possible to schedule a call with one of our team. Absolutely. So if you want to just have a chat for five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour or so about some of the specific questions of starting a business, I'm sure we can help you. Yeah, so let us know. That's You can also email in just to sales at glowforge.com mm -hmm. and they're happy to get on the phone um, and you know talk about your specific needs. I know sometimes it makes you feel more comfortable before you make a big investment you know, oh, to yeah. talk to someone mm -hmm. about it. Totally yeah. get that. And you can do it multiple times too. You know, If that works for you, then just let us know. Nancy says, um, I've been here before and asked about the cutting boards. My project came out beautiful. How do you do multiple art at the same time? Oh, we'll definitely get oh, to that when we're yeah. showing I'm you I'm actually going to show you that. Yeah. Perfect. Well, let's mm -hmm. dive into a print then to okay. get started. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. So uh, everybody can probably see on our pegboard here, we've got a bit of a blank space. We now have another blank space right here since I broke that, the tape dispenser. It was a tape dispenser <laughs> at the beginning of the stream, but yeah. Nick's shoulder took it out. <laughs> yeah. I can show you it here. Uh, it's very simple. This is made of some pieces of acrylic. <laughs> it, it's very it just, sturdy. Yeah, very. It just clips into place until oh you hit goodness. it with your elbow. And you essentially push the center out like this so you can put different types of tape on there. So. I love that that just happened because right before we started, Nick <laughs> almost ripped his mic out and I made a joke about that. He can't, you know, have be a real performer without having some kind of wardrobe malfunction. So they hit a tape malfunction. Yes, prop malfunction. yeah, yeah. It it's happens. like a foot in the door, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but you can see the rest of these shelves. We've been printing on this piece of red proof grade acrylic. This one um, is uh, the headphones holder. So there's two little yeah, legs mm -hmm. for it. And then these are like the braces for the headphones. Yeah, it's yeah, right which here. you can probably see right here. Here. So I'm going to throw this in. Why don't Bailey I give you, give you an up close? Yeah. All right, so here we are. This is the Glowforge plushie. We <laughs> we don't have this for sale right now. It's sold out, but we did have it on Glowforge.com during the holiday season. Maybe it'll be back, but this is the most kind of custom item that Adrian made because look mm -hmm. at this little shelf that like fits <laughs> him perfectly. I love it. And then so we've got a headphones hold holder, just a little um, hook that could hold really whatever, mm -hmm. and several different sizes of shelves. Yeah, and these just slot together like this. You can take the shelves off. And these hooks are all the same size. You can see I use one of these over here just to hang this print but the different shelves themselves are made to fit the same hook. So you could print a bunch of these all at one go and then print the different size shelves to accommodate whatever it is that and you want to And then this there. is kind of falling apart, but it was a tape dispenser. <laughs> you can see kind of the remnants of it. Yeah, um, we have a, an axle and the pivot there. This slides on here. And then that Your just tape pops fits on, on there. the top and then it spins around. Yep. Yeah. Super cool. Um, yeah. And actually, even before we dive into um, the design, do you want to show a couple other examples of what folks oh, have yeah, done? Sure thing. I got on a... Uh, Instagram last night and just looked up uh, the Scottis Ikea, the Scottis, I think it's S-K-A-D-I-S -S is this type of Ikea pegboard. There's tons of pegboards. Um, we just know that our designs fit in this one, so that's why we're using it, because this is what our friend had at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I went on and saw like kind of Ikea hacking and everything, and oh my gosh, look at all these different ones that I found. Yeah. So this first one, like. I love this one so much. I have a three-year-old yes. at home, and this is <laughs> perfect for them. We are about to go away, but you bet as soon as I get back, I'm going to be tackling so this one cool. myself. It's so cool. One of our coworkers has made one of those water tables for his kid, and I feel like we okay. got to show him this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And this is like a greenhouse sort of situation I'm really really into house plants right now so this is kind of what I'm nice. um, thinking of I'm always like where else can I hang a plant from I'm running out of space you know so right. I love that 
And I love how expandable it is too. You could start with one of these, add more, you know, as your decor changes or the things oh, exactly. that you want to store changes, just print a different type of shelf to fit and accommodate. This is kind of, you know, a more typical looking one that you might have just for, you know, your basic office space. It's got mm -hmm. a spot for like the iPad, it looks like, and just photos and just keeping the d uh, desk organized. This one's uh, Lego. <laughs> yeah, this one's rad. I, I love this. I mean, if you're into the hyper organized, this is perfect for you. And I haven't clicked through here, but oh yeah, there you can see kind of a bigger scale. And they, I mean, they have what? Oh, wow. Four or six, what, maybe 20 of these pegboards throughout that space? That's awesome. Um, this one, I think, Bailey, you said was Oh, a this is in retail. Shop, right? Yeah, for like a fancy, um, like a customizable keyboard with like these different oh, yeah. special edition keys these are you the can keys. get. Uh -huh. I love this container idea where you can have like the lid that's attached to the pegboard and then the containers like slot on mm -hmm. either magnetically or some of them are probably like, you know, a rubber lid. Yeah. You could do spices. You could do, oh, look oh, at this, yeah. camp gear. That's yeah, so that's cool. Really and, how, and it looks like art. It's almost like making your hobby into art rather than just having it in storage. It looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people out there who like to make and create, you have tools and, and equipment and even pots of paint that you really love. Yeah. And it's a shame to put them in a cupboard. Yeah. They sometimes they're beautiful enough that they deserve a place like this. I like that because it's almost like displaying your hobby rather than just like shoving yeah, it in a closet. Absolutely. I'm the type of person that I am sometimes like hesitant to take on new hobbies because of all this stuff. I'm just like, where mm -hmm. am I going to put it. that though? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so on the is, wall. Yes, clearly. I love it. <laughs> and then, okay, this one is a PS4 that is mounted to a pegboard and then also there's, um, you know, mounts for like the controllers. I'm clearly a video game person. I had to look up. I was like, it's a Game Boy. Booby, booby, booby. Uh, <laughs> um, super cool though. I love that look. And then really there's nice. one more. Yeah, this is this is the last this one. This one, okay, this one I think is just showing two different things you could do. So on the right, it looks like it's kitchen, like spices, cinnamon mm -hmm. sticks and things like that. And then on the left, it's like bathroom stuff and also like hooks for the towels. Yeah, right. I assume it's two different rooms, not like a bathroom kitchen hybrid, but. Well, you never know. <laughs> uh, people are pretty creative if these days. If it is, it home, looks so. beautiful. So <laughs> anyway, couldn't believe it. That's just like a small sampling of what people are doing with these pegboards and and ikea hacking or like ikea upgrades as a as a trend let us know if you like this because it's a really easy and cool thing to do with blowforge any like yeah. basic 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 that you can buy from ikea like you know a basic table sh uh, shelving unit anything you could really make it custom and incredible with blowforge making um mm -hmm. you know really intricate cut out um what are those called? Like kind of like trellises to be in the back uh -huh. of a shelf or yep. as your shelves. Like mm -hmm. there's all sorts of custom things you could do. Absolutely. So let us know if you like that theme and maybe we'll take a little trip to Ikea and see what else we can customize for you. Yeah, there's such <laughs> a lot of potential there exactly. too. Exactly. I, I mean, this is great because you can buy this this foundation, if you like, from a store and you can add their shelves and their, and their uh, containers and things like this. But you could really start from scratch with this. The pegboard backing itself will be the perfect pass-through prints. So you could create these your own size, your own shape. You could make these slots a custom shape, perhaps if you're reflecting a brand, you could incorporate your yep. logo in there, that kind of stuff. Um, so there's such a lot of potential here. I'm very excited to do one of these from the ground up at some point <laughs> in the future. Okay, I'm loving this comment from Stacy. I'm reading this as I think a positive thing. Hopefully this is how she's saying. <laughs> she said, I was thinking pegboard, boring, but now I think I need this in my life. I need to make this with my glow force. That I'm glad we converted so you. Good. Yeah, maybe it wasn't the best title for this stream in retrospect, pegboard. I was excited about it. Yeah, that's I because say, I have a soft spot for pegboards myself, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> All right, well, let's see it. Let's get to the print. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here, and I think in just a second you'll be able to see what I see. Perfect. And what we're looking at here is the Glowforge print app. This is what everybody's going to have access to when you're a Glowforge owner. And if you're already out there using Glowforge, apologies if you know this already. <laughs> just bear with us. Um, but somebody out there was asking how you can combine pieces of artwork within your prints. And I'm going to show you one way to do that right now because in here, if I just move that out of the way so you can see more clearly, I have got four shelf brackets and only one shelf. So let's put another shelf to go with that. And to do that, I'm just going to hit this plus button right here, click on upload, and I'm going to choose the design that I want. And I think let's go with a slightly different size and shape. Oop, I hit my wrong key there. Let's go with, where is it? Maybe this one. No, there's a skinny one. This one, perfect. All right, that's the one I wanted. <laughs> Click open, and that's going to add that to your workspace. And when I think about the Glowforge print app like this, you can create a lot of stuff from scratch, but I like to think of it kind of like a compositing tool. And this is especially powerful if you're not a designer because you can 
I say not a designer. Everybody out there is a designer, really. We all have ideas. It's just how you bring them to life, right? That's a um, very nice way of putting I mean, I, it. I think it's true. It is, it is true yeah. with, with how easy a lot of these tools have gotten to. So, yes. yes. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, really, it plays to whatever your personal strong suit is. If you mm -hmm. if you happen to be an office worker and you live within a Microsoft Word and PowerPoint every day, you can use those tools, save whatever you create, <laughs> and bring them into here piece by piece. Maybe a set of words here, a shape here, and then start to combine them within the software like this. And I can't quite see the piece that I brought in. Oh yeah, there it is. Let's arrange these on the shelf so I can show you what I mean. So we brought in four different designs here from four different files that our colleague created. And we're looking right now at what I consider my favorite feature. And again, I apologize every time. Sorry <laughs> if you've heard me say this before, it's but so cool. it is really cool. Because what we're looking at right now is the actual piece of material that's inside the Glowforge. And you can see we've used this before. It's a, essentially a piece of scrap, but we don't have to waste any I of this material. I think the camera is, the camera and like the Wi-Fi, so everything's instant, is the biggest difference between Glowforge and like the laser cutter that you could buy in 1995. Right. Uh, because with those laser cutters, they could cut and engrave in the same materials. They were using the same strength laser tube and everything like mm -hmm. that. But it's the ability to exactly fine tune control where on the material your uh, material or your design is going to cut or engrave. And also the fact that um, it does, the Glowforge does the autofocus on old school lasers. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you, you would have to use a little physical little jig or tool to measure the exact height of your material. Glowforge is able to do that kind of with camera lens technology, basically. So it's it's kind of like a smart laser, I like to explain it to people. Yeah, um, yeah. Super cool. And, and and the question we were having in chat earlier about like, I hey, I just did um, uh, cutting boards for the first time and they turned out great, but how could I add more than one piece of art? Like Nick was saying, you could add multiple pieces of art. So imagine that that piece of red acrylic in the bed is a cutting board. Like he was saying, you could be pulling in text from one program, um, art from uh, clip art online or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. or a Your design from Illustrator. Yeah. yeah, you could do a anything. Photo. So mm -hmm. you can do it all in one print. You don't need to do separate prints for each um, each graphic. Absolutely. And thinking about the business too, let's say you're spinning up a design, maybe uh, something like a pair of earrings like this. If you just have one of these, you can just copy and paste this as many times as you like in the design do itself. Do the whole bed. Which, yeah, which, I mean, when you're looking at a piece of material like this, which has got a lot of holes in it, you can often just think, oh, you know, I could squeeze another one of those in there. Command yeah. C, Command V, we have another copy, and we can find a way to squeeze that into that spot. And it might be just a tiny <laughs> maybe too small. Exact. Oh, oh maybe. it's so close. But point is, we can save this piece of material and we can still use it. We don't we've, have to waste it. We've heard of business ideas being born just from like scraps. Like, say that you printed these shelves, you had a little, a mini shelf business. And so you always have like the same shape of scrap. Yep. They look at that scrap and they say, what could we be doing with this extra acrylic? And they say, oh, now we do shelves and earrings or whatever. And yep. it's, it's so creative and so smart. And I mean, that's what small business owners want to do. They want to be efficient, mm -hmm. um, you know, with every dollar they spend, obviously, how can we make it into two? That's how you, that's how you that's run it. a business. Yeah. So it's, it's so cool. Yeah, it really is. So don't throw away your scrap is what we're yes. saying here. There's the lesson. Uh, so you watch me arrange those pieces on the material. I've sent the print to Glowforge. The servers are going to estimate how long this print is going to take and send it down to my screen. And I can see this is 2 minutes 48 to cut out two shelves and four shelf brackets. Uh, we've only got one button on the printer, as you can see <laughs> Ooh, here. So here, let's get a the close interface up. Is, uh, is very simple. Uh, I'm going to hit it. That's All it. All right. And we'll kick it off. So I just saw someone in chat that missed the beginning ask where we got this design. So we actually got this design from one of our coworkers who started, got a Glowforge, and then began designing his own custom pegboard accessories. Um, but with Glowforge, you have lots of, lots of options for designs. So you can design um, basically in any program that you can export as a PDF. So things like Illustrator or um, um, Inkscape or what are some other ones? Um, I, I like to use like PowerPoint or Canva, just really easy, basic programs that don't require a lot of like in-depth design knowledge. Um, and you can also with Glowforge engrave or design with just a pen if you use our trace feature, which is where you can put handwritten, you know, note or letter or whatever on the bed and capture with the cameras. <laughs> Nick is chasing I'm, I'm this chasing Glowforge this. around. I'm trying to show you what it's doing, but I put it too far towards the front, so it's hard to get the camera in there. Sorry about that. Well, we anyway. tried. <laughs> yes. so, so there's a whole bunch of different ways you can design for Glowforge. And then if you don't want to mess with design at all, you could just never do any of that. And you mm -hmm. can purchase the designs that you want either from, yeah. um, we do have a Glowforge catalog, 
or just sites like Etsy. If you go on Etsy and search Glowforge Design, there are like, yeah. literally there's Lays like 72,000 results or something. It's I just saw the other day yeah. and I was like, whoa. Oh yeah, whoa, I've whoa. been wasting my time. I don't know what's on page 200 <laughs> or whatever, but there was some so really fun. cool stuff. Yeah, yeah but so. the, I mean, the catalog Bailey mentioned is a great place to start. Um, it's a repository of different designs, ever expanding. The majority of them are actually designed by people just like you out there. They're Glowforge customers who created something cool, submitted it to the catalog. We loved it and we're putting it out there for other people to buy. A lot of them have got commercial licenses too. So if you wanted to, you could purchase the design, print the physical thing yeah. the way that you envision it, and then you can sell that finished design at you know your store, your craft fair, or something like that. And we have everything in there from really simple stuff to really complex things like this, oh which I gosh. think is pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a marble to show you this, but this is a so, marble run here, with a bunch of different up, gears. Yeah. This guy too. So if I turn this, you can see that I think it picks the marble up from the bottom here. So you, you can imagine it going in there, it takes it up to the top. And then once it gets to this point right here, it's going to drop it off. And then the marble runs all the way around down to the bottom again. And so this, it's just wood and yeah, like maybe some blue, right? But that's plywood. it. Yeah, that's it. That's wow. all that is. It's so cool to see mechanics that actually right? work. Yeah. And I think people often see this tool as kind of a crafting tool right. only, but I mean, really, if you are of this mindset, if you like the complex, the technical, the engineering side of things, like Golf Forge is so precise and so accurate, yes. you can very easily achieve stuff like this. So incredible. Yeah. And this is in the catalog if anyone's interested. Uh, someone's asking in chat if this design is going to be available um, in the app. Not <laughs> yet, but gosh, if y'all are interested, let uh -huh. us know because I, we, could, we, we, may, we, we know some people around here. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So. Yeah. And if <laughs> no, any of you go to Ikea and want to put in a good word for us, right. you know, it's like, oh, it'd be really Heard nice if you, you know, did Glowforge what in What if here. there was a Glowforge in Ikea? Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> getting too carried away here, but, but still, that is a very exciting prospect, excited. right? Yes. All right, well, that's done. So I'm going to come around the front here and pull it out. So as you can see, super quick. We can touch this immediately. It's not hot. And if I open this up, you can see we've got some nice new holes in our material and we have all of our pieces right here. And I don't think we've talked about proof grade yet, have we? No, really? not at so all. This no. is a good time to, to yeah, chat about so that really briefly. What Nick just used for this print was a sheet of our own material called proof grade. So you can see it's got this um, barcode on it. So this was a uh, medium red acrylic right here. We've got some medium walnut hardwood and medium basswood hardwood. We also make leathers, um, kind of a composite board called draft board mm -hmm. and some veneers that are sticky so you can make almost like a wooden sticker. So these proof grade are a line of materials that we have specifically chosen and tested and dialed in perfectly for Glowforge. So you pop one in, the camera reads the QR code mm -hmm. and then the Glowforge already knows the settings. It says, oh, medium red proof grade acrylic, okay. And then the settings are there mm -hmm. and you don't have to fuss with them at all. If you want to not use proof grade, you certainly can. People print on everything from oh, like, yeah denim jeans to like a rock they pick up on the beach to like food products mm -hmm. um you know cutting boards flasks um coasters cork like every ma many materials um you can do that you just need to do a little bit of research about what settings you might try in terms of the speed and power of the laser itself because glowforge is so versatile it can cut <laughs> it can engrave yeah look at this engraved denim isn't right? that incredible that's so so cool that the detail here is amazing fashion companies using industrial lasers to engrave like the whiskers and wear marks they into, do and like a fake a fake wallet on mm -hmm. the back pocket that sort of stuff it's so, so I mean, fun there's it's so it's so cool so i mean glowforge with the same laser can cut um or engrave on printer paper and also mm -hmm. you know quarter inch hardwood and so the laser is that you know variable um oh yeah look at this yeah, right look here. how it's delicate paper. that is yeah, and this is so fine, the detail. I'm not sure if you can even really see it. Maybe we'll just grab that on the handheld really yeah, fast. Yeah, this one's but pretty cool. Look at that. I, we, we know that there are people out there who are skilled enough to do this by hand, but with a Glowforge, it doesn't matter if you have already built up that skill set. You can take a design and print it on a piece of paper like this that. This is... No trouble at all. This is that draft board kind of prototyping material mm -hmm. that we make. That's also a proof grade one. This was, um, uh, this is one of the, the, the middle to a tape dispenser. Yeah. And, and did we mention the paper on the front too? No. So all of our proof grade materials are protected with this uh, masking paper. Um, this, for example, is a piece of wood. And so what we've done is actually taken the time to sand the surface of this and apply a furniture grade finish. So if you're creating something like a piece of jewelry, you can expect it to be basically sail ready. Is that yeah. a word? You know, as soon as you if take it out of the machine. Wood. 
If the look is painted, maybe you want to opt for making it out of a material more like draft board mm -hmm. because it can absorb paint and uh, color better and it's cheaper maybe. Absolutely. Um, the acrylics are the same. Like this is a piece of that red acrylic. This is it with the masking yep. tape removed. Um, and actually another cool thing about this is you can draw on it too. So Bailey mentioned the trace feature. You could print a piece like this. Let's say, let's say you're a seller. You print a bunch of blanks just like this and you keep yeah. them in your store. Someone arrives, you offer them the ability to customize this. They draw directly on it, stick it in the machine, and Glowforge will be able to recreate whatever they drew or wrote. So imagine that perfectly. with like, maybe shelves is kind of a weird example, of course. Like, <laughs> you don't personalize your shelves? shelves? You know? <laughs> but, uh, but imagine if you were selling like uh, picture frames yeah. and you're at a craft fair mm -hmm. and the folks are walking around the craft fair, they see your beautiful picture frame and you say, oh, and you can also write love forever from grandma and grandpa and it'll be in your handwriting on this forever. Mm -hmm. Like just so, so special. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And folks, I mean, if you had a Glowforge at a craft fair, like your booth would be, I mean, you, you and I know, we, we brought Glowforge to some like tech fairs a few years ago, uh -huh. back back in the early days. And like we would have two hour lines oh, yeah. to make a little keychain on Glowforge because people want to come up and stick their nose in it while it's printing. I mean, we still do every time it's on, we're like, Whoa. Oh, it doesn't get old. <laughs> We've been here six years. It doesn't get old. If you want to see true joy, like get your friends over, have them stare at your Glowforge. Children, I know it's the best party oh, trick, it's right? So, it's so cool, yeah. Uh, you'll notice here as well, this paper, you can peel it off with your fingernails, whatever it might be. I'm actually using Gorilla Tape here, which is a really sticky sort of duct tape. Uh, and I can use this to kind of wax off that tape and save my fingernails. Just speeds things up a little bit. Pro, uh, pro tip for you. Lizbeth is asking, how do you hold the different materials inside the machine, like small pieces, especially when you're engraving? So maybe, so, stop, so there is like some air circulation happening in the machine um, uh, in order to get kind of like smoke and particulates mm -hmm. out um, the vent, which we'll talk about in just a sec. So maybe Lizbeth means if you're putting like paper or really, really light weight material down, sometimes that can like blow around. So I have seen people either um, develop little like fixtures to keep things in place, like mm -hmm. pencils, like a jig yep. basically. Mm -hmm. So if you're engraving 30 pencils, you take a piece of proof grade and you cut, you know, pencil shaped um, holes in it and then you put the pencils all in and that way they kind of stay in place. I personally have never really had to make a jig because everything that I've made just stayed down. There was no blowing around or moving around, mm -hmm. but um, I guess you might find with some particular projects that you'll need to do that. Have yeah. you had to do that before for anything? Occasionally, yeah. but generally not. I mean, there's there's a steel mesh that sits in the bottom of the glow forge it's called the crumb tray. Your material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If you're putting something in, say, uh, maybe a river rock that's not quite sitting flat, mm. you could do something like white tack or plasticine and just put oh, a little hole underneath. Just, yeah, just to position it right so it's perfect in that's the machine. Idea. That would work too. Yeah. But in, in, in all honesty, you don't need to futz with it too much. You can just lay things in there and print. Yeah. If you have a specific um, a specific thing that you're thinking about, let, let us know. Maybe we can give you some more tips about it. Viola is asking about um, glassware. And I'm oh, about yeah. to pull this mic out. There we go. Okay, here is a plate, <laughs> uh -huh. a glass plate. And I and think we've a, got a... Just there. Is it the same? We've got the same emblem. I think it is, both. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's what glass is like. I'm just uh, adding our shelves right now. Oh, yeah. Let's get that. And here's can see. this. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect example of how you could get creative with offering um, canisters um, with that, within that two-inch height limit. So this is a nice, this could be perfect for like hot sauce, liquor, anything like mm -hmm. that. And you could customize yeah. and it's still, um, you know, shallow enough, short enough to fit within the bed and be engraved. Mm -hmm. So Glowforge can't cut glass, but it can engrave it gorgeous. Again, for a business, you fill that with your you know, custom olive oil, whatever it might be with your brand logo. Someone gets to put their name or their date or something like that on the piece itself. Oh right yeah. Right there and then in your shop. So cool. You know, add 20% to the price. So is this the one we just added on? Yeah, this these two the right here. Shelf. Oh, both of these are new. I need to get <laughs> so I guess we need something to put it on there. I'll just Cute. stick this on there for now. But yeah, you can see how you easy know, that was. You know, got your flask in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, Cute. sometimes it's a hard day. Right? Maybe a late night. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But you can so see how quick cool. and easy these are to spin up and how adaptable they can be. Uh, maybe we should show the examples of other people's again, since we know that people are oh, tuning in and out. Let's do so it. So just to tell the story again, if you're just joining us, the reason we did this pegboard is because one of our coworkers, um, ever since he joined, you know, we're on, we're on Zoom with them and everything. Mm -hmm. And we've seen his pegboard like evolve and have all these custom <laughs> accessories. So we asked if we could have the design files because he's been making them himself. Yeah. This is a little Glowforge plushie that we sold over the holidays. It's sold out right now, but he made like this custom shelf that is made specifically for this little guy to sit on, which is way too cute. And then so I jumped fun. on um, Instagram and looked and he's not the only one doing really, really creative things with pegboard. So show a couple of those others. Yeah. So this is Adrian. So, so this right is Adrian. Here. So you can see how full this is and how many different things he has on there and how specific <laughs> some of them are too. But yeah, if I go across to uh, the next tab, which is this one. Yeah, here we go. 
These are what we found on Instagram as we've been digging so around. So you can see it's that seam that, that looks like they've got two smaller ones put together and mm -hmm. to be vertical. Yeah. Look what people are doing. It's so fun. And, and they're and using a lot of zip ties, things. it looks like. They don't have a glowforge. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> well, we should, we, we should change that. I feel like a, a, a DM may be coming on. <laughs> but here's another great example. Completely oh, different. Absolutely love different. That. Uh, we've got one here as well, which is kind of like a home office sort of setup. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just looking at the things here and thinking about what they could add to this if they had a Glowforge. We've got Lego organization here. Uh, this one is a retail display for a company who makes custom keyboards. You can see an example of a keyboard. And actually, this looks like bamboo at the bottom. So again, put that in the Glowforge. You can engrave it. Uh -huh. um, you can even cut those pieces out if you're making those keyboards too. I, this one might be my favorite. This is pretty cool. Because I just yeah, shove yeah. all my camping gear in the basement, in, in my crawl space, <laughs> and that's such a shame. Like, it's, it, that looks so nice. I wouldn't yeah. mind having that displayed, especially right? when that's a really big part of your life for a lot of people, you know? Yeah, and they've clearly invested in some stuff there. I see things from Bare Bones. Like, that stuff's not cheap. Yeah. You, know, you want people to see that. Um, here's a gamer's setup here with the PS4 on the pegboard. This is nice. I can imagine drilling through the pegboard and hiding all the cables behind it, too. So you could have a really like, neat setup. Like, this could be your Glowforge business, is just doing custom IKEA pegboards mm -hmm. for people. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> seriously. Yeah, absolutely. I have a consultation thing, you know? Just buy glasses like me and Bailey and, you know, smart <laughs> shit. They'll think you're from, you know, I Scandinavia. Think, I, think that's what I, <laughs> I think that that's what I'm most shocked about when I read about small business stories with Glowforge is, like, how niche they mm -hmm. are yeah it's true like you think like you need to have a big idea i don't even think you need to have a big idea i think you just have to have an idea that like there's you know enough people that that you are that you are niche i guess that's the only word i yeah. can think of but yeah i, I think a lot of those people see... like they go within their own community right they see problems they see solutions they offer those exactly. you know it kind of grows it's often starts with just doing something for a friend right and then some a friend of a friend sees it and they ask for one and then before you know it you have an etsy store yeah. and then you know and that's what happened to me actually i saw I this cool conversation um there's this great facebook group but we don't run it just one of our one of our customers and like lots of <laughs> lovely owners are in there called glowforge world and i saw someone in there saying like gosh i'm thinking about getting a glowforge and i want to start a business and I'm just not sure what and I don't know and we move all over because I'm a military family and so I'm just not mm. sure and people jumped in and were like oh so you're a military family perfect here's like 10 ideas of custom things that you could sell to military families that would be all about you know their time in the service mm -hmm. and like family and and I was like of course she's got a built-in audience and they all want to support each other yeah like, right brilliant i Absolutely. feel like everybody can kind of find that niche in their life mm -hmm. and plug into that with yeah. glowforge so i hope she does it but i just I, I hope happened so to read that and yeah. i was like that's so I, cool I mean, you can travel with this too bailey mentioned they traveled oh, around yeah. a lot um you package this up the way that it came you can put it in the back of your van carry it around we, we actually have a customer who has one of these in the back of kind of an rv type setup it's a oh. mobile maker space oh. right oh that's super cool i'm excited for that kind of stuff to really start coming back after yeah. covid mm -hmm. like the maker spaces and all that great stuff yeah um Rod is asking, what about round material? Does the program automatically adjust for those type of round materials? Yes, uh, Glowforge can stay in focus about a half an inch up and down over a curve. So mm -hmm. like a rock, like Nick was mentioning, mm -hmm. or even like the surface of uh, your MacBook, which is, if you know, if you're doing designs kind of in the corner, it does mm -hmm. technically like round down a little bit, which would make the, the design like look, you know, more fuzzy or something, but it's able to stay in focus because of this like camera lens magic that we've got going on in there. Let's see. Keep those questions coming. Yes. Uh, the difference between an engrave and an etch. Oh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about oh, those different yeah. things. Okay. Sure. So Glowforge can do, let's say, four things. Um, we've got <laughs> cutting, which is nice and simple, just like a pair of scissors cutting all the way through the material. We've got scoring, which is like drawing a, a single continuous line on the surface, just like you were drawing with a pen. Uh, you've got engraving. Um, which is working line by line, kind of like an old school dot matrix printer to build up an image by firing the laser at, in two different ways. Yeah. Um, and this is where we get into some- Careful. Oh, oh. <laughs> I should Close just be line. right over here, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now there's two different ways that we can approach the engraving. And I'll get some examples to show you here. We have got um, a standard or a traditional bitmap engrave, which uses a similar technique to a newspaper to build up images. So to be clear, this um, is a piece of plywood that we've engraved a photo on. And we yes. didn't have to do anything too fancy with the photo. You want to stick with a photo that has some nice contrast. Sometimes you would want to make it black and white and like bump up the mm -hmm. contrast a bit. Yeah, that tends to help. Image, really. But yeah. um, this is just a stock photo. And I mean, it looks beautiful. Imagine doing that with some of your wedding photos or right? something, for right? Those, for that military uh, family. Exactly, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But basically, the laser here is firing at the same power every time, but it's putting those dots closer together and further apart to recreate different shapes shades of, of gray, essentially. Or we can flip that on its head, and instead of 
changing uh, the spacing of those dots, we can change the power of those dots. And that's where we get into 3D engraving, which is what this is. And again, military families, emblems, logos, exactly. that kind of thing. That would look so cool. Awards. Like this. And mm -hmm. this is like carving into solid material with a chisel. Like we're getting real depth, real texture, and all of this comes from a digital file and it happens inside the Glowforge in one go. And basically with your file, the laser goes along the design like this. It looks for areas that are light and dark. And if it's light, it lowers the power. If it's dark, it increases the power. And it does that as it works at the image, carving deeper and deeper into the material every time. It's it's a pretty cool technique. So we call that a 3D engrave, mm -hmm. and you'll need to work you'll you'll need to work with a design that was specifically made to be a 3D mm -hmm. engrave. Like I wouldn't do that with a photo; that would yes. look strange. But um. yeah. a depth map is generally what people refer to it as. Yeah, yeah depth map. If, there if you go. If you do a little Google scale. search, mm -hmm. like a 3D engrave uh, design file, you'll you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to make sure we touched on the three different types of Glowforge too, because mm -hmm. I just saw a question asking about um, how they're different sizes, and they're not. Um, all three Glowforge that we sell, which is the Glowforge Pro, Plus, and Basic, they're all the same footprint. So at a quick glance, you cannot tell them apart. Um, but the dead giveaway for the Pro, which is the one we have right here, is that slot in the front. Mm -hmm. So the Pro is the only one that has the pass-through slot. Um, so the Pro is our top of the line, and the pass-through slot makes it so that you can actually work with bigger materials mm -hmm. than just those that might fit into your Glowforge by opening the lid. You're actually able to shove a material through <laughs> one side and out the other. It's probably not the most eloquent way to put it. Push passage through, I suppose, is yeah, the, yeah. the word we decided might, might be on. Where the yeah, name yeah, came yeah. From. yeah. So um, we actually do sell proof grade materials in mm -hmm. big four foot yeah, sheets. So we've got one right here. Trip. Okay, I'm gonna not trip. I'm gonna walk over here. <laughs> and just to give you an example, oh. this here is, sorry, I think that was me actually, <laughs> baby, Bailey. You're good. Uh, this is a piece of uh, maple plywood, no dropwood, at 12 by 20 inches in size. And this is the biggest piece that you can fit inside the Glowforge Basic and the Plus. But with the Pro and that pass-through slot, you can fit something that's infinitely long, so long as it's no wider than 20 inches. Yes. And this is, <laughs> Big Glowforge yeah, this is a piece of quarter inch cherry plywood, I think. Um, and essentially the way this works is you create your design in actual size. So you draw the full thing as it's meant to be. Then when you put your material and design into the Glowforge, Glowforge prints as much as it can, then it stops, takes a few pictures of what it's done. You slide the material through as much as you like. Um, it looks at the design again and figures out how far you moved it oh, and basically kind of joins all the lines together for you. So section by section, you build up your print until it's finished and you pull it out the back of the machine. So for this, for example, um, the little, um, so he's a maple, big sheet of maple for mm -hmm. the background of this is like a height chart for a child. And the little accessories, which are in cherry, those were done like on a separate sheet. So imagine if you will, that we then attach those with, um, you know, glue or something afterwards. And I think you could even score on exactly where they were supposed to go, yeah, right? Absolutely. So to it's make perfect. assembly easier. So you mm -hmm. can see maybe this first bit that would fit in the bed, the first 11 and a half inches, is that what it is or so? Is it 20 by 11? That's the width Yes, yeah. sorry, yes. Yeah, and uh, so that was one bit and then push it through and then this next bit mm -hmm. down. Yep, so cool. And then and, we have it. Yeah, and, and so you just bring it in, um, to scale, like Nick said, mm -hmm. you don't need to, to separate it into different files. It could be one full giraffe and the software will help you um, split him up. Yeah, so and actually Bailey touched on a cool point there too. With the score feature, you can actually indicate where customers might need to do something. So oh. if you had a complex design that's pretty big, but you want a flat packet for shipping, so it's cheaper for yep. everybody, you can indicate which bits go where, how things go together. And just to give you an example, if I could pick this up, this space shuttle oh my gosh. is a ton of Here, different let's pieces. Get this guy up close too. Uh, and I don't think I, I think all the design marks are on the inside, but um, basically each of these different pieces has a little mark to show where it needs to go within the model, which makes instructions easier, makes assembly easier. Oh yeah, that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool result, I would say. This is this is something too. from our catalog. Yeah, this is in yeah. the catalog. If you did want to build this one. I, mean, I think this might have been a design of the month one time. I think this Maybe. was actually free at some point in time. Yeah, we do a design of the month where we feature um, a designer and give away a design and lots of fun things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the one this month is a really cute, like, do we have it over here somewhere? The birdhouse? Yeah. Oh. I don't know where it is. Do you it's know where it is, Mike? I think like it might be in the craft corner. Yeah, it's super cool. Birdhouse. Retro diner birdhouse. Yeah, it's like made of acrylic and mm -hmm. it kind of looks like an in and out, but for birds, adorable. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so like we were saying, yeah, pass-through is only available on the Pro. It is our most 
popular. Most people do opt for the pro. I think they just don't want to wish later that they yeah. could make that 10 foot sign or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, and it also the pro is faster and can uh, run continuously. So mm -hmm. it's great if you are running a business and or and are on some kind of like you know time crunch with you, you got to produce this much product every day. The yep. pro is a good option. That's true. Then one one step down from there would be the plus, which is also quicker than the basic, um, but doesn't have the pass through slot. And then the basic um, is, you know, our, our slowest model, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but then, no, the basic is actually a really, really wonderful machine, um, a great entry machine if you've never done, you know, digital fabrication or anything. Um, and it can make basically everything that you say, see here with the exception of, you know, this pass through projects, which you would have to, you know, work some joints into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not impossible, just a little tricky. Exactly. Yeah, so I think that the, the pro is three times as fast as the basic. The, the plus is two times as fast as the basic. So if you're trying to think of like production speed times, that's, oh, and here Mike just awesome. Thank grabbed you. us this little. So this is our design of the month right now. So if you are a Glowforge owner, this is available this month. And mm -hmm. this was made by uh, Chelsea Anderson from uh, at Chelsea Makes mm -hmm. on, um, on Instagram. She is actually a contestant on NBC's new show, Making It, which is, are you going to show this Yeah, let's this do a off? little, yeah. Yeah, NBC's show's uh, show, wow. I tried to finish Daily <laughs> Census and I failed miserably there. Yes, uh, Making It, that show, it's yeah, on TV, so it's, it's pretty good. Nick Offerman <laughs> and Amy Poehler, and it's like a making, co uh, you know, contest sort mm -hmm. of show. And she has been a Glowforge customer for ages. Yeah. She does little miniatures and stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at this little, like, benches. Right. So you fill it with seed here, the birds can sit here, take a snack, fly away. That's it's all so, acrylic, okay. so it's waterproof too. This, and then you can make the little, um, the little, uh, Picnic bench for the squirrels. Oh yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> also that too. Yeah, it's been, great. I, I it's think so that people fun. have gotten really into the backyard bird watching during the pandemic. Oh, I know I we have. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. Birds and bugs everywhere. So uh, now before fun. we finish with the models too, uh, we have those three different models, but regardless of which one you choose, all of them are gonna come with a big pack of proof grade so you can start printing right away. It'll look something like this. Um, and this is valued at about $150, mm -hmm. I think, right now. So you get to experiment with some materials on our dime. Yes. Uh, and you'll also receive um, a dryer hose for venting. And do we want to cover venting really quickly? Yeah, early? absolutely. I think that should be good. I'm so just... when you cut or engrave with the Glowforge, there's some, some fume and smoke that can come off depending on the material. Um, and you want to make sure that's vented away. And Glowforge has got right. a fan in the back and it's going to push that smoke out the back of this dryer hose that we include. And you can just throw this outdoors, through a window, through a garage door, whatever it might be, to direct that smoke outside. Now, if you aren't in a position to be able to do that, we have a product for you, which is the Glowforge air filter. It's uh, not attached to a hose right now, but a hose <laughs> would attach right here. This Absolutely. is obviously not the one that we're currently using. Ours is in front of us, so I can't show it to you. But yes. this is, it's a little, it's small. It's just like the size of a like little recycling bin, mm -hmm. um, like you might have in an office. And yeah, it, allow, it has just this one dial. Yep. Nice and simple, replaceable cartridge inside too. Uh, yeah. And it makes sure Glowforge a completely sort of closed system. So long yep. as you have access to power and Wi-Fi, you could literally take this anywhere. So if you had power and Wi-Fi in the woods, you could be printing <laughs> in the woods. You know, it's great for people who might want to take these to a craft fair, for example. That so design on the spot or engrave on the spot stuff, I think oh, yeah. could be. Could that's, be. that's key. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to see yeah. some of y'all doing that. <laughs> um, Bunch of questions coming through. Where can I find the 3D engraved designs on thicker wood like you show? Or where can you find 3D engraved designs? I'm not, I'm actually not sure the answer to that. I would try, I would try Etsy to be honest. A lot mm -hmm. of folks are on there making laser design files, but I'm not sure about those like relief um, depth ones or how you might um, look for, are you looking right now? I'm just taking a quick look <laughs> just to see what comes up. Yeah. Um, if you're not using proof grade material and are entering the material thickness, does that affect how deep the cut is? Exactly. So if you're not using proof grade material, you either manually enter the material thickness or you and or you should also use um, a tool that we have called set focus, um, which basically brings the laser. You, you tell the you tell the Glowforge exactly where on the material you're going to print. It'll bring the laser head over to that. It'll measure it to try to get the best idea that it can. And yeah, yeah. that's yeah, a really that's, that's honestly a really good a rule of thumb to use any time that you're using non-proof grade, you're going to get a better result. It just takes a little bit like more accurate of a picture and everything. Yeah, I think. yeah, absolutely. So. It's great. Again, using robots to do all the hard work <laughs> for you. You give it your intent. I am not as good as a robot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like to think I am, but I'm definitely uh, Someone's not. also wondering, <laughs> um, when the Glowforge is printing, can you close the Glowforge app and work on another project? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. You can have multiple windows open. Let's say in the future your business takes off and you have three Glowforges, you can use the same computer to run all three at the same time. So absolutely. And then, like when your Glowforge is printing, it has a little icon in the corner that says like how long the print has left. So you know, you can start arranging your next one to get mm -hmm. it ready to just press print. And That's a good question. 
Okay, man. This is <laughs> my first live really video. In the chat I'm here. new and I have a question when engraving. Do you recommend painting the wood first before engraving? How would I paint around and engrave? Oh. Ooh, well, I'm not sure exactly the look you're trying to achieve. If you want to have, say, a you know, painted piece of wood and then a design engraved on that. I don't know. You could really do it both ways. This person should probably look at our menu engraving live stream. You know, with oh, those menu boards behind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so oh yeah. I, this I, is like I have some a particular cool passion technique. for this for this type of thing. Yeah. So we, we talked about scoring earlier yeah, on. Yeah, explain what, you, what magic you did scoring, here. Scoring, uh, I'm seeing if I can find an example here, but okay. So on a piece of material, we've got this masking tape that we talked about before. With scoring, you could actually cut just the masking tape and peel it off and then apply your paint. Then peel off the rest of the masking so you get a really precise result. And that's essentially what we did with these signs here, if you can see them. So these were all the same clear acrylic to Absolutely. begin with. And then Nick did different techniques with peeling and painting the acrylic in different order to create like, you know, this, the gold detail. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first layer would be the gold. So yep. he, he peeled off the let's eat and the little um, parts of the little um, vegetables and then and also all this, and then painted it gold, and so it just stuck to the part that didn't have the masking, and then peeled off the rest of the masking and painted it black over that, right? Yes. Did I yeah, say that Yeah, right? that was about this right. This really yeah. took me a while to understand. <laughs> I don't know why. But it's all different configurations, and you can absolutely paint first, then engrave. That'll get you a really crisp result within the painted surface, depending on the colors that you're working with. Um, you can flip it around. You can use that masking, like we said. But also, I mean, if you think about your design, you could engrave a little channel around your design area so that when you're painting, the paint basically flows where you want it to go. It's almost like a little moat, if you like, around your I design. It makes it pretty easy. I have super cool techniques. Mm -hmm. Like uh, beyond paint, too, you should look at things like gold foil. Um, yep. mm -hmm. It's kind of oh, like yeah. it's literally like foil, but it's kind of like malleable, and you can like push it down into the engrave. Oh no, this is. Do we have paint. anything with foil in it? I thought this was it's foil. It's super but that's fancy. Paint. You can do it on all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, folks, just do amazing finishing techniques. And if you're considering a business, like that's something to consider. Do you want to print something where it is saleable right mm -hmm. out of the Glowforge, and so. Um, you know, you optimize for quick prints and cheap materials and stuff like that. Or some people go the total opposite route where instead of selling a bunch of things that are quick, they sell one or two things that are high end, expensive, custom, highly finished. Absolutely. So it just yeah. kind of depends which way you want to go with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess just thinking about this, here, that's kind of a combination, right? Because they have here a piece of leather. Um, yeah, this is one we bought off Etsy. Yeah, um, we buy customer way. prints all the time too. Mm -hmm. um, we do a little fun giveaway uh, just of... <laughs> um, our, our coworkers, and then we get to show them off here. So this is a really cool technique. This is a living hinge cut. So this uh -huh. is actually just a piece of hardwood that though that has been able to bend because of this living, living hinge technique. That's it. And then they have this piece of leather, which is was just a piece of veg tan leather. They've dyed it uh, pink, and then they've engraved it. So yep. in answer there to your you question, go. dye first or paint, then engrave. Uh, and they've attached this with some nice hardware glued it together and you have a functional bag that's in a very unusual I wonder material. wonder how different the result would have been if they had engraved and then dyed. I, I think with leather, to be honest, it would look quite similar because of the way that the leather changes as it's It wouldn't really engraved, absorb the dye and everything. Yeah, yeah. Right, absolutely. But this would give you a crisper result around the edges because applying the liquid after the engrave is going to kind of soften the edges of those engraves. Um, but yeah, great example. We have a bunch more fun things that we didn't even get to today. So come back. We, we should probably <laughs> go. We've been on for almost 50 minutes now. So this has been really, really fun. Thanks for all the questions. And yeah. um, we'll be back um, the next few weeks doing more prints. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have some other coworkers join me in the coming weeks. Give me a little break. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be <laughs> off uh, back to see my family for the first yes. time in a very long time. So I'll be away for about a month or so. Wow. Um, yeah, well, we'll I, I'll miss hosting you. this. <laughs> yeah, you'll be totally fine. You're in good hands with Bailey, but I, I'll look forward to coming back. Uh, but this was a super fun theme. Again, let us know if you liked the IKEA hacks mm -hmm. because, um, gosh, oh, I've got so some much IKEA we can do with that. That could use hacking in mm -hmm. my own home. I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, if you have great me. examples of IKEA hacks, do send them through to us. We love to hear from you. What you love to see. Um, any other feedback you have as well, time, duration, themes, questions we didn't get to. Yeah. Once this video is over, you can head to YouTube. You can leave comments right there. We want to make this as good as it can be for you who are watching here at home. So do whatever you can to help us help you. <laughs> and make sure that you subscribe so that next time we schedule one, you'll see that pop up. Um, and follow us on Facebook and Absolutely. we're also there. So yeah. thanks for coming, everyone, and have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a good